Thanks for sticking around for this bonus episode. If you're considering automation with one of these robots, this is the episode for you because I'm gonna take a step back, I'm gonna slow things down, and I'm gonna show you exactly how we program this step-by-step step for taking pallets in and out. Hopefully it's of great value to you if you're considering automating some of your processes. Let's get started. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. see, see. It, it looks something like this. So here we are taking an initial look at the setup. Now let's start with the machine on the right hand side. First of all, we have a spindle probe loaded. We have our custom vacuum pallet loaded and the doors are closed. This is important later on. Now the robot itself is at a common waypoint. We call it the home waypoint. The actual robot program itself is pretty short because it calls different sub programs. So for example, it starts here, this is a parked home waypoint. The first uh, sub-program it's gonna call is the pickup pallet program. Then it's gonna pass through that home waypoint that you see right here, holding a pallet, and descend to the camera drop-off. Let's go ahead and watch this through, and I will pause at certain points and talk you through it. So right there, it's at the rapid point. It's gonna wrap it down, and it's gonna pause right above the pallet. Now it starts descending and when it descends, it looks for force, in this case, eight pounds worth of force. Once it reaches that force, it turns on the vacuum gripper, goes back to that home waypoint, descends. It's gonna stop a quarter inch or half inch above the table and then feel for force again. Once it does, turns off the vacuum gripper, goes to the common waypoint, takes an image of the pallet, descends to its center point, and then runs the process of loading the pallet into the machine. So the door opens, swings around, and then it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna get, uh, it's gonna pivot into place, stop a quarter inch above the pallet, descend in Z looking for force. Once it does, it turns the gripper off, comes out of the machine, closes the door and returns to that home position. Let's stay with the robot. The machine's gonna get started right about now, but now it's running that that sub program where it picks up the next pallet. So yes, it is starting at a common point that we could program. I've seen this where when you're de-stacking uh, parts, it can record the last known pickup location through a variable. Man, if there's anything that I could tell you in automation, keep things simple. It's processing this pallet while the machine is running. So no problems there. Let's back up a little bit and take a look in the machine. Okay, so the robot hit cycle start. The first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna probe the top of the pallet. Now keep in mind, these are raw extrusions. So they come in all different uh, shapes, twists, bends, bows. So we wanna find out the exact shape of it. It's probing the top, left and right, which are saw cut, and now you're seeing it probe the front and back because extrusions, at least of this 10 inch wide material, has a very wide tolerance. Next thing it does is it goes and it probes the corners. This is a just a standard canned routine out of the Haas system where you can tell it to go measure this. And what it's doing, it's finding the angle. So the robot actually placed it in a good spot, but we are just finding out the exact angular delta so that we can make this part not only square, centered, symmetrical, and at a consistent alignment with the edge. So the first thing it's doing here, it's going to brush the top. Now this is the working surface. All our pallets are only machined in one operation on one face, uh, with the exception of the two socket ends that are cut down a little bit. But we are starting with a nice consistent face. That's why you see that brushed aluminum face on it. And we do that because we want to offer the most amount of material to our customers. So a customer will open the box, they'll look at the bottom of the pallet, it looks beautiful, but the top, the edges, it's a raw extrusion. Now, in the past people said, eh, it looks a little ugly, but keep in mind, you're going to be facing it. In fact, you have to face your pallets because not all machines 
are perfectly trammed in. So especially if you're doing bolt down applications where you're bolting your pallet to the top, or I'm sorry, bolting your part to the top of the pallet, you want to start with a nice trammed in flat surface and not all machine tables are trammed from the factory, believe it or not, they have a tolerance too. So, and also if we were to flip these pallets over and machine a second operation, the price would go up and also you would receive less material as a customer. That's why we do this in one operation. Now, before we wrap up the machine cycle, let me show you some of the automation on the inside of the machine. We've connected an air knife on the right hand side of the spindle. You see that little block sticking out? That's an air knife. And it's basically blowing a perfectly straight stream of air across the top. So it did one pass, it pauses for six seconds, then it goes back over the other face. We pause for six seconds because these things dump a ton of air. So now it rapids forward, triggers to the robot that the cycle is finished. Now the robot is now running another subprogram to go in and pick up the pallet. The vacuum chuck is off. Again, once it reaches the bottom of the pallet or the top of the pallet, now it, it turns on the vacuum gripper, picks it up, pulls it out. Now we're gonna take a pretty wide turn here. That's because we've noticed that it dripped the first three or four seconds out of the machine. So we didn't wanna drip over the table. We kind of take a roundabout way. And in the drop off position, we start at the top of a stack and now it's seeking the bottom. Once it feels it at five pounds, it turns off the vacuum gripper, goes back to the home position. That pallet, if you remember, was already positioned while the machine was running. So then all it has to do is take a quick snap, an image of the part, go back into the machine, and then this cycle will run over and over and over. So far we've processed hundreds and hundreds of pallets perfectly really consistent we've had so many things potentially go wrong but we've programmed around those if the robot bumps into anything or doesn't pick it up it goes right back to that home position and gives us an alarm that our operator can tend to well i hope that extra bonus content was of value to you speaking of value we've got our pearson fixer friday series to check out if you are a machinist and wanna take your production to the next level. We've got a moving video series where you can look at that, how we set up our shop, and of course, our UMC video series right over here. And if you haven't already done so, consider subscribing. So until next time, go innovate your production.